this is uh, the company that uh, that uh, created the software is Fluxicon, Fluxicon and uh, it's a really powerful tool that I have uh, ever seen so far. And uh, it's a relatively also straightforward for us to use the software. And it is very useful for analyzing process. So once you um, collect the data, it will be really handy for you to analyze the, the process and visualize it and uh, do a lot of uh, work. So in this uh, tutorial of how to use um, DISCO, uh, we are going to understand per phases of process mining analysis. So, um, you know, we have to first understand what kind of processes we have and understand it clearly, and then uh, 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 address the problem and the bottlenecks we have to find. And uh, uh, we have to also see what statistics are available and those things we can do with this software. And the second goal is to be able to get started and play around with your own data. Um, this happens, so I will show you the example data set and it's relatively simple for you to, to uh, collect the data and uh, analyze the data. So if you have chosen your uh, term project company or project, then you can collect the data and put them into the spreadsheet. And then you can use set this software to analyze the data. So let's first talk about the scenario of, uh, of this exercise that we are going to do. And then we'll talk about the roadmap and what roadmap that we have to follow. And then we have a hands-on session uh, that we will be using the software together. And lastly, um, some points that we have to consider together. First, here is the scenario that we are considering. So uh, this is a purchasing department and work with the suppliers. So suppliers or requesters some first contact the company and saying that, oh yeah, we want to make a purchase for certain uh, device or equipment or uh, certain things that we need. Um, we want to purchase that and the requester will send that uh, request uh, RFP to the requester manager and requester manager will work on RFP and then that will be sent to purchasing agent and then purchasing agent will uh, look for suppliers that might be able to um, uh, find the right source and uh, uh, or, or you know, go for bidding, right? And the suppliers will go for bidding and you have to choose the winner. And then the supplier will make a request for finance uh, uh, for payment and that goes to financial major, manager. And then this data is stored in ERP system, enterprise resource planning system. And you are you know, getting the data from this system and uh, analyzing it. Right, that's uh, the overall process. Again, requester approaches request the manager and request the manager send uh, it to purchasing agent and purchasing agent is gonna look for suppliers and suppliers will make a request for payment. And that's the, uh, you know, the larger process, five-step process. This, this is like SIPOC in a larger picture they are looking at. Um, here are the problems of this scenario. The first one is that if you, you know, we will examine it later, but we will see that uh, e, this process has inefficient operations. So how can we improve these inefficient operations? That's uh, uh, something that we have been discussing for a long time. So inefficient operations have to be addressed. And the second problem is need to demonstrate compliance. Compliance. So. Um, uh, is it following the rule that we have set up? Is there any cases that are deviating from our law, our uh, standard, right? That have that they have to spot and point it out. So need to demonstrate that you know all the cases are um, 
or adhering to this uh, compliance. The third uh, problem is complaints about process duration. So this process is receiving a lot of complaints from the customers or purchasing agents or suppliers about process duration and that has to shorten. So the, those are three problems that we have to consider and address in this case. And the goals of this analysis is first understand the process in detail, right? So you know, if you are going through purchasing process, you know that it's quite long process. For example, if I want to make a, uh, you know, a purchase, then I have to go <laughs> through these uh, multiple layers of processes and uh, uh, people have to authorize, have to be reviewed by many people. And uh, uh, I made a one request for purchase last year and I gave it up because it took so long and I was kind of frustrated. Um, uh, and the same happens in, in other companies. And uh, we have to understand this process in detail. And you know, as a person who uh, made this request, I don't know what kind of process this is going through uh, that's uh, frustrating. Uh, they can be the same with uh, the, you know, purchase requester or supplier in businesses. So it is important for us to understand the process in detail. The second goal is checking with uh, checking whether there are deviations from the payment guidelines. So as we said, um, you know, every case has to adhere to the standard. And if it is deviating from the payment guidelines, then uh, that's problematic. So we have to um, identify if those cases exist, if they exist, why that happened, how can we address that? They have to be uh, uh, fixed, right? So that that's uh, uh, be addressed. Now, number three, uh, analysis. The third goal is controlling performance targets. So it is important for us to remember that the target day, you know, we want to finish everything in 21 days, 21 business days, you know, from the initiation of the purchase till the payment, we want to get it done in 21 days. It can be ambitious goal. Uh, it may not be ambitious goal. I'm not exactly sure in this business situation. Um, I think the shorter, the better, right? Uh, just like uh, inventory turnover. However, are we really achieving this goal, right? We have to understand that. If not, how much, how many days are delayed? How far are we from this goal that have to, have to be understood? Most of the case, we may be able to achieve uh, this goal. However, in some cases, we may not be. So in that case, what shall we do? That we have to do. So these three goals, we want to understand the process in detail. We want to see if everything is complying to the guideline. And the third thing is um, we want to also understand whether our process is meeting this goal. These three things we want to understand. And we are using this uh, software to carry out uh, these goals. And even if you know uh, we are not using a software like that, we should be understanding this, right? That's the goal of process improvement. So now talk. let's talk about the roadmap, the second agenda. And uh, the roadmap in process analysis is that first you wanna ask good questions, right? So we already asked the three good questions. So it's already done. But if you are doing your own analysis, then you do want to uh, ask a good questions like, uh, uh, you know, what, what is our uh, performance and uh, uh, is there any deviations? What are the process in details? Or you can ask, oh, is there any person who is not working as much as others do? Or is there any other person who is working, overworking, right? So those things we can ask uh, in your process. And uh, uh, if you ask a good questions, then you can go to a data extraction. Uh, you know, uh, you have to analyze the data and um, you know, it depends on your questions. What kind of questions do you ask? If it is about people, you have to collect the people data. If it is about process, you have to 
you know, collect uh, process data. If it is about time, you have to also uh, collect the, uh, the time variable too. So asking good question is critical so that uh, you know what kind of data you need and extract that will be determined by that. So you have to ask that. And data extraction, if you are working for a big company like Lockheed Martin, then they are using uh, ERP system and you can contact the database administrator or the team of the data scientist. Then they are going to work with you and uh, get the data for you. They will extract the data from ERP system and then deliver it to you. It can be CSV file or you know, any other data file they are going to develop and, and get it back to you. And then now your job comes to data analysis. You know? So how would you analyze the data? Uh, and you can use various methods to analyze the data and uh, extract uh, the as is process. And you can see the bottlenecks and you can try to answer the questions and uh, you can also calculate statistics. All kinds of things can be done in data analysis. And then you will make a presentation out of the data and uh, it can be, you know, um, typical PowerPoint presentation or it could be any other uh, tools that you have, uh, or it could be a report. Uh, so the presentation will be made. So these are the roadmap uh, that involves uh, process anal analysis. So let's take a look at the questions. The first question is how does the process actually look like? Or we want to understand the process map in detail. There's the first question. And second question is, are there deviations from the prescribed process? We asked that question before. And third one was, we do we meet the performance targets? That's a third question that we can ask. And uh, a data extraction, as I said, you can contact your ERP or database manager and they will give you the data. Um, but uh, it can be a harder because data is very sensitive. Uh, so you may have to go through layers of approval process. And then now you are on data analysis and here in data analysis, we'll do uh, the um, uh, disco and I'm gonna run it and then show it to you. So now is the time for you to, to run uh, this code. So please open it. Let me share my screen with you again. So let's do first thing first. Let's go to uh, Canvas. So let me share my internet. Uh, okay, here. So if you come to Canvas, um, here's a disco installation guidance for you. And then uh, student handout, you can also refer to student handout. and. The thing that I want you to download is purchasing example.csv file. So this is the file that I want to work with. So I'm gonna download it. So download it and save file. And let me just share my screen. So I downloaded the file and I'm gonna go there and it's an Excel file. So I open it, purchasing example.csv file. And let us examine this file together. So are you guys able to open this file? Okay, so let's first take a look at this um, um, case, so, so there's a trick in Excel. Uh, I'm using Mac, so if I do Command, Shift, and Downward Arrow, then I can, you know, choose this column at once. So if I do Command, Shift, and Downward Arrow, I see that I have 9,120 uh, rows, right? So 9,120 rows. Um, and I have start timestamp 
and complete time stamp. So meaning that it started at uh, uh, this time, 2011, 12 a.m., right? And then uh, case two started, um, to the, you know, January 1st, 2011, right? And I have also the complete time. So I see January 1st, 2011, 1237, it was completed. And uh, January 1st, 2011, 1229, it was completed. So this is case number. And what kind of activity was done at the time? Uh, the first activity, January 1st, uh, they created purchase requ requisition at the time. So, and then uh, it was sent to uh, Kim Pasa. Uh, she was the one who received or who did this creating purchase requisition on the ERP system, I believe. And so she was the requester of, of this case. That happened surprisingly at uh, midnight on January 1st. I think this time might have been manipulated for exercise purpose. Um, and then if you look at case number one, now row, row number five says case number one again, and 12.37 or 5.37 a.m. And it, it uh, was uh, completed at 45, so about uh, eight minutes he took, and create a request for quotation, right? So create purchase requisition to create a request for quotation happened. And this is Kim Pasa again, and she was the requester at the time. And if you go to the row number six, and then shortly after that, 641, and analyze the request for quotation, that happened by Coral. Carl, Carl D. Groot, purchasing agent, uh, he did that. And then if you scroll down and then you see row number 14 and case ID is number one and uh, activity send a request for quotation to supplier and Carl D. Groot and purchasing agent, he did that. And then uh, create quotation comp compa uh, comparison map by Magdalena Preduta. Uh, she did that, she's also a purchasing agent and so forth, right? So we see that uh, case one is flowing as time goes on and uh, new case was coming in and uh, it was moving through the process that we can see. So in your term project, you want to have case ID or it could be personal ID, person A, person B, person C or case ID, you know, case number one came in at uh, at, uh, you know, uh, November 9th and nine o'clock, it came in. And then the completion time was, uh, it took us uh, two hours, three hours, right? That has to be uh, recorded. And then the activity was, yeah, the activity was creating purchase requisition, or it could be approval process, or it could be uh, simply reviewing it, right? So the activity has to be defined and then uh, written there and the resource, uh, who was the person in charge of that activity that can be written there? And then the role uh, was the person requester or reviewer or, or approver, you know, so what, what role uh, does the person play that can be recorded there? And if you do that for each and every uh, case and activity, then you will form a data sheet like this. It doesn't have to be as long as this, uh, but you, you say if you collect the data for a week or for a month or for a, a few months, then that will be very useful for you to understand and analyze the, uh, the case. Okay, that's that. So let's uh, close this and, and make sure that you save it in a folder that you can remember. It could be, so I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna save it at download at this point. And here I'm gonna say class. So purchasing example and class. That's how I uh, saved it. You can save it in your own name and I'm gonna be using that. Then I can go now to Disco. I'm gonna run Disco. And uh, let me, maybe it will cause you some confusion. So I'm gonna quit and run it again. So run it again. So Disco is running. Oh, the same thing happened. Um, 
And then I'm going to go to this uh, left folder and find the file that I, I saved. So go to downloads and I saved purchasing example and class.csv file, right? So I'm going to open that. So I open the file. And this first initial screen is very important for you to examine because if you're not setting everything up right, then you are going to have a difficult time later in analyzing it right. So I want you to pay attention to what this is. Um, so look at uh, this remove. So you, know, you can remove a column from here if you do that, but I don't want to uh, remove anything. So I'm going to not use that. And this is case ID, right? So ID, you can see the uh, ID, um, the word ID over here and uh, case uh, disco automatically identified the first column as ID, right? Case ID, and which is correct. Case ID, the, the name is case ID and it picked this one as the ID. But if it is not there, you have to do that. For example, uh, it may be, uh, you know, disco wrongly picked it up as, as other thing but uh, in that case, you have to change that to ID like that, right? So now you specified the column as case ID. And then now we need to also have this timestamp, uh, start time span and end timestamp. This is very important information. Uh, you don't want to, you know, misspecify that, uh, correctly identify this one. So click on that and this is already recognized as start time stamp, which is good. And then complete time stamp. So I, I am good with this too. And then we have activity here, activity. That is um, what did I do there, right? So create purchase requisition. Uh, these are the main activities that we have done in this database. So you have to um, identify as an activity. Sometimes I think some of you might have have this other sign on activity. In this case, it's problematic. You need to change that to activity. So this mail sign, right? Mail icon is activity uh, sign that uh, uh, you have to use and correctly identify that. And then resource. Uh, here's the resource. The person is resource. You know who was that person who. Uh, did this activity and uh, that is a resource in Disco. And role in our database, we have requester and purchasing agent and so forth. And as of now, let, let's just uh, use it as a other, other we'll put it under other category. Then now uh, we can start import, right? So if you have correctly identified every column uh, correctly, then you can now start import. Click on it. Then you are importing. Uh, did you encounter the same the same um, error message that I did? Anyone? So the problem happened here. So so I changed the start stamp. You know, as I double click. It, uh, Excel automatically changed the format and that created some problem like that. And then um, that created problems. So my suggestion for you, so let me try first if this works or not and then do that for you. Okay, so the problem was I made some changes on the initial database. Let's go here. So this was my initial database that I used. What I did was I double clicked on this timestamp and then found that it changed the format and that you know, through Disco, some confusion and they are not understanding this database very correctly. So what I did was I used the initial uh, file that I downloaded from 
from course canvas. So I download the purchasing example that uh, CSV file, and I didn't do anything. I just download it and use that as the database file for Disco. So I'm gonna save it again. Okay, so I download purchasing example two. So I'm gonna to go to Disco and go to this uh, open uh, folder or open file and go to data downloads and I'm gonna just open the database that I just downloaded from course canvas, doing nothing with it because when I uh, just uh, clicked on the timestamp that changed the format of the timestamp. And I opened it, I'm examining case ID, start time. So they, they are stand, timestamp, so that's good. Activity is correctly identified, that's good. Restores, that's good. And role. Everything is good. So I'm going to start import. And then I open the file. So if you have done everything, uh, if you followed what I have done so far, you should be on this page. Okay, so then uh, you are now on uh, Disco. So it looks like when we open the file on Excel, somehow it causes the data to be affected by Excel and that's why we have some difficulty. So my recommendation at this point is to directly open the file from Disco after downloading your data from Canvas. Okay, so uh, we have this data and we have imported the data, right? And then uh, here is your, your uh, process map. Right, so we, your process map is drawn here, and then you can use this zoom to magnify it or uh, zoom in and out. You can use this zoom and uh, say about this much, and then you know let's let us try to understand that together. So here's a star point: 608 cases were uh, in this data, and you started, and then. We came to the first step. The first step is create purchase requisition. And 608 cases came in and there was a starting point. Among them, 374. So I don't know, you know what happened to the rest of 200 something cases. And uh, anyway, the first 374 cases went to the next case that is analyze purchase requisition. So when he came in and then somebody has to analyze the purchase requisition, there was now 382. Why is that the case? It's because there is uh, 307 going to the next step. However, this many, uh, about uh, 11, eight uh, cases are going to amend the purchase requisition uh, process, right? So uh, many of them, the most of them were good enough to go to the next step. However, some cases, 11 cases actually had to be uh, amended. So that's why amend the purchase requisitions right here and it has to go back. And then after, you know, amendment, it has to go to the next step, creating request for quotation. So now our FQ is created for that request requisition. And there are 544 of them and uh, 544 of them now move on to the next step, analyze request for quotation, right? So you have to now analyze it, it was created. So you have to analyze it again. And 1,107, oh wow, what happened here? Can anybody answer me? So why do you think we have 1,107 cases? Although the total case was 608. Right? Among them only 307 came into the next step here, but now you have 544 and 1,107 cases you had to analyze for request for a quotation. Can anybody ask me, why do you see 1,107? Because um, not every person that got a quotation uh, followed through. 
Very good. Uh, good. So, Karina, uh, that's a very good answer. So, in other words, you have to go back and forth a lot uh, to analyze it. There are forms that are incomplete or not done well, or you have to ask more questions, or you have to explain. Those things have to happen. So, about you know four times, right? You know, four or three or four times on average, you have to go back and forth and go to all these things. And then after that, 413 cases went to send a request for quotation to suppliers, right? You approve that and you sent it to suppliers to, to, um, to provide you with that uh, product or equipment. And then it moved on to create quotation comparison map uh, so that uh, you can see which one is the cheapest or best option for you. And then you go to analyze quotation comparison map and then go to choose best option and then set conditions with the supplier, right? So you have to, you know, uh, the term for delivery, uh, you know, I'm gonna have pay the half of them first and the other half later. Uh, there is a warranty and all those things you have to settle with the suppliers and that happen and then create purchase order right here and then confirm the purchase order and deliver goods or services to you and then please uh, release purchase order and approve the purchase order and send the invoice and here 413 to 403 about 10 cases disappeared the send the invoice and please suppliers uh, religious applies to invoice and it comes to now set a dispute with the supplier somehow maybe it was not delivered as promised or there were some problems uh, so you had to settle a dispute with them and 323 cases went to authorize supplies invoice payment and it was paid and it came to an end right so that was the main process however there's also uh, this process of amending it is amending it. That's what we saw. Now, um, here, look at on your right pane, you see detail. Do you see detail here? So if you actually uh, activities leverage 100% right now, if you just decrease it to say 0%, what happens? What happens is that you can see only the cases, the major uh, processes, right? In this case, I'm not going to zoom one hundred, zoom in one hundred percent. I want to have this three thousand feet above the feet above the earth, uh, that kind of view. Then, in that case, you are going to decrease your activities to zero percent and include only activities that are mostly uh, frequently happening. In that case, you can see these maps like that, right? Now, I'm going to now again. Uh, increase it to 100%. So I want to see all the activities. And I, now I also, also want to see the path. So these are the paths that I have seen. Now I'm going to increase it to say 20%. Right? If you increase it to 20%, now you come to see more uh, arrows, right? The path are not just at a, a zero percent, now you are increasing it. As a result, now let's see, I will increase it to 50 percent. 50 percent and zoom in. Then you see, you know, for example, the send invoice, authorized supplies invoice payment, and then send invoice. And these 10 cases skipped over these two. Uh, processes and went to there. And the religious supplies in which 323 cases went to directly there, but in between the settled dispute uh, with the suppliers. And we also see that uh, analyzed request for quotation, 131 cases there just ended right away. So probably they thought that it is not suitable to proceed with 131 cases that you can see here at 50% case. And say, if I just increase to 100% now and then zoom in, then what happens? I see here a lot more detailed um, path here. So create purchase requisition and uh, we see that uh, analyzed purchase requisition, 11 cases went amend, and then eight cases came back, 307 cases jumped over to create requests for quotation and so forth. And analyzed request, there's a lot of interactions over there. 
if you scroll down um, here we see more uh, activities happening between release purchase order and authorized suppliers to invoice payment we see that uh, uh, there are um, quite a few cases 80 cases are dis disputed and then 26 cases are going back to release purchase order. And then among the 26 cases are coming back to the suppliers. So a lot of, uh, uh, you know, loop uh, is taking place right here and then moving on like that, right? So if you just adjust this uh, path, then you will be able to see more, um, uh, you know, activities and arrows and details. Very good. Here's a statistic. Do you see? Here's a map. We haven't look at, looked at the maps. Now we want to look at the statistics. So let's click on statistics. So I'm going to click on statistics. And then, you know, takes you to a different view, which uh, tells you various statistics about this process. And on your left, statistics view, we have overview activity statistics and resource statistics and role uh, statistics. And let's take a look at overview first. On your right, you see events, 9,119 events are here and cases, um, 608 cases. So in total, you have the 608 cases that consist of 9,119 events, right? Steps and procedures you had. Uh, in total among them. And then activities, in total activities, they, the, the steps that we have, in total, they, do we, they are 21 activities. In other words, from creating uh, the, the requisition till the end or paying the invoice. Um, you know, sometimes it's very short, but sometimes 21 uh, activities you are going to have in the process. That's what it means. Now, median case duration, you know, you have learned about median and mean in your statistics course before. Median is right in the middle, right? Right in the middle, that's 11.9 days. So on, uh, uh, on average, about 12 days it takes uh, for you to, to, um, to process all the requisition, which is really impressive, isn't it, right? So uh, they, their goal was 21 days. And uh, uh, you know, on average, actually, median days 11.9, which is far shorter than 21 days. So you must be very happy about that. But now, if you look at mean case duration, on average, how, how long did it take? However, it says 21.5 days. So uh, um, the average is actually exceeding your performance target. So what is, what is going on? Median is 11.9 day. However, mean is 21.5 days. So we definitely see that there are something uh, fishy about this process and we need to uh, you know, analyze it and see what is happening with that. And start date was January 1st, 2011. End date was, uh, what is 14, 10, 2011. Probably October 14th. So that's what it be. European style because this software was made in, uh, was it Denmark? Netherlands or Denmark, I think. So um, they are using European style here. And then look at case ID, Oops. look at case ID here. Case ID one, two, three, four, and it, it should have up to 608. Our case ID, uh, we have uh, 608 cases, but uh, as we saw before, Case ID is 1949. So a lot of uh, activities we had, events we had, and then uh, event 17 and variant number two, and start date and finish date and duration is uh, identified here. And now if we look at uh, more specifically, events over time, look at this uh, visual. Uh, so it started from January 1st. So events are increasing, right? A lot of events happening in the beginning of, of uh, January and then uh, February and March. And then it dies down, right? You don't have as much uh, events. Can anybody tell me, why do you think this business is showing this kind of activities distribution? So it's just skewed to the right. Why do you think this is happening? 
Yeah, what was the question? The question is, look at this graph, this uh, visual, right? Mm -hmm. So it says events over time, right? And meaning long, if this is timeline and event number of events is on your vertical uh, axis. And if you look at here, you know, in the beginning of the year until February, you have a lot of activities here. But as time goes on, February and March, and then as time uh, progresses, you have less activities than before. Why do you think that is the case? What, what does this graph tell you about the nature of a business? Um, maybe that it's just like their busy season or they do a lot, they just do a lot more in the beginning of the year. That's correct. I think, you know, it tells them, tells us the nature of this business that uh, they are doing a lot more business in the beginning of the year. For example, they might have, uh, you know, selling uh, some kind of a special product that has seasonality or regulations. It deals with regulation, right? The vaccines are sold in the winter more than uh, spring or summer, right? So uh, those nature uh, they are carrying, so we can understand that. So their peak times are between January and March, and that's about it. And now active cases over time, active cases. So this one is also kind of strange <laughs> because active cases were, uh, a lot of them were in the uh, beginning, January to March. However, after March, now in July, we have a lot more cases. So it's kind of difficult for us to reconcile because we had a lot of cases in the beginning, but in Jan uh, July and August, we didn't have as many cases, but active cases over time, if you look at that, you know, actually in July, we have as many as uh, 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 the cases in January. And that's puzzling. Why do you think that is the case? Anybody can answer. What I'm I said is if you look at events over time, we have a lot of events in the beginning of the year, but later it dies down. Now, if you look at active cases over time, you know, in the beginning we had a lot, but it, you, you are supposed not to have a lot of cases and events later, but it looks like in July we have a lot of them. So why is that the case? Why is is there a discrepancy between events over time and active cases over time? So events, right? A lot of events in the beginning of this year, but, uh, and there were a lot of the cases, but it looks like the, the cases are picking up again in July. However, in July cases, they don't have a lot of events, right? So I think there are two factors working in tandem. The first one is that some cases are delayed and they are uh, kind of backlogged a lot. And, and as a result, they have a lot of active cases. And also in July, they are picking up their orders again and uh, uh, active, they are quite active at the time. So uh, that's uh, causing the problems. So we see by looking at events over time and active cases over time, we see you know, that what kind of uh, work volume do, do they have in their business that can be understood. Now, case variant. Case variant is an important information for you. So I encourage you to check this out. Um, uh, case variant means that uh, some cases like uh, case variant one, Variant two, so variant, variant one says 88 uh, cases are variant one, right? And uh, case variant two is 77 cases. Out of 608 cases, 77 of them were following variant two, right? For example, you know, some cases are going through a very quick process. You know, you know it's very linear and there's no loophole and uh, a feedback just goes straight from from, uh, from start to the end, right? That can be variant one. But variant two would be very loopy, doopy, you know, uh, kind of uh, a process. And uh, that has 77 cases. So by looking at this variant, we see that there are variations, variations in, uh, in our processes. And some are following some, you know, set uh, course of actions, but some are following different 
uh, or, or deviate from the normal process that can be understood in variant. And we see that the case one, variant one, two, three, four, five, and six, seven, and eight, right? This many uh, variants, the major variants are here. These are, you know, exceptional. Right? It's not that, uh, uh, it's a not that common, so you don't have to care much about this, but these are uh, most common cases. So although you have the set, set of uh, type of a process, these are the things that you need to pay attention to. Events per case. Uh, per case, usually uh, 62 events, I'm sorry, uh, 63 cases had two events and uh, uh, eight, uh, 106 cases had 18 events, right? So it's a, a lot longer. So this has to be looked on. And then uh, 80 case had 17 events. So by looking at this, you see how many uh, events are uh, putting into one, one case that can be understood here. And case duration, look at duration. Um, 12, one day and 12 hours, 80 cases. However, this one, if you look at this one, uh, 109 days, and nine hours, that was one, one case. So most of them here, most of them here, this one, 17 days. So most of them or half of them are uh, taken care of within 21 business days. However, uh, there is a long bipolar this distribution uh, here. And if you look at over there, then some cases are taking really long, long time, probably we have to look at the volume of the uh, transaction. It might be quite expensive one. And case utilization, mean active duration, how long it takes uh, for uh, you to take care of that, and mean waiting time, how much waiting time is there that can be analyzed.